All right, have you guys ever used ChatGPT? Wait, what does ChatGPT even stand for? ChatGPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Have you ever used ChatGPT? I already forgot what it meant. Uh, but today we have, and we asked it some questions about aviation, and here's what it thinks. Okay, so the first question we have here is, badly explain how to fly an airplane. I don't know that we needed uh, ChatGPT to tell us that. I have plenty of students who can tell me that. Let's see, flying an airplane is like driving a car, but in the sky. Okay, we're doing good so far. You need to make sure that the airplane is safe before you take off. So even ChatGPT knows that safety is number one. I like it, okay? Then you drive it on the ground to the takeoff area. When you're ready to go, you push a pedal to make the airplane go fast and then lift the steering wheel to make the airplane go up. Okay, we were doing good until that point. I'm not gonna push a pedal, I'm gonna move a lever, but other than that, so far so good. You keep going up until you reach the height you want to be at and then you level off and cruise along. Yep, pretty good. When you get close to where you wanna land, you pull the steering wheel down to make the airplane go down and push a pedal to slow down. Okay, so again, I'm not pulling the steering wheel down, I'm pushing the steering wheel down and I'm pulling a lever down. And uh, I mean, really, I wanna leave the lever where it is, but we won't talk about that too much. Then you point the airplane at the runway and try to put it down gently. Really good, yes. It's not easy, so pilots need lots of training and experience to do it safely. That is also correctly. So here's what we got. Badly explain how to fly an airplane. This actually did a pretty good job of how to explain how to fly an airplane. So that's like a three out of 10 out of execution here. Next is badly explain how to land a plane. Okay, even better. To land a plane, wait until you're really close to the ground, and then just pull back on the steering wheel really hard. Yeah, okay, great. If I pull back on the steering wheel really hard, I'm gonna tail strike. That's not gonna be good. So this is nine out of 10. Badly explain how to land a plane? Yes, that is a bad way to land a plane. I don't wanna do that. This will make the plane sto slow down and gently touch down on the runway. No, well, this will make the plane smack the runway and then smack the rest of the plane. Make sure to hit the brakes really hard as soon as you touch down and then open the door and jump out of the plane as fast as you can. Okay, this is definitely a nine out of 10 execution on badly explain how to land a plane. Don't forget to do a cool roll when you hit the ground to impress your friends. Love it. Yes, absolutely. Okay, give me a funny explanation about uh, why certified flight instructors always tell their students to use more right rudder. Oh, no. Okay, it's not because they have a right foot fetish. I, I don't even know where to go after this. Me personally, it's a left foot fetish. So? It's already wrong. <laughs> the truth is, Certified flight instructors secretly enjoy seeing their students make awkward kicking movements with their right foot. Yeah, you know, if they just actually did the movements, I might be into it, but they don't. They sit there and look at me like that meme that's been going around. I sound like an ancient person right now, but it's the meme of Pedro Pascal and Nicolas Cage looking at each other in the car. That's it. That's every day in flight instructing. That's all it is, 100% of the time. Okay, so the kicking motion in the cockpit, it's like a little dance party in the cockpit, and instructors can't help but giggle when they see it. Oh, yeah, definitely. But in all seriousness, using more right rudder is actually a really important skill to master when flying a plane. This chat GPT is better spoken than half the pilots I've talked to. It helps to keep the plane moving straight level. No, it doesn't, but I appreciate what you're trying to say here, especially during takeoff and landing where there's a lots of variables to consider. Yes, so the instructors are just trying to help their students develop the muscle memory to make those subtle adjustments with their feet. Plus, it's always good to have a sense of humor when learning something as serious as flying a plane. It is. I don't know that I've ever used right rudder as I subconsciously stick my right foot out there. As a humorous thing in the plane, most of the time is right rudder, right rudder, more right rudder. Give me more. Please press the pedal down, okay? Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Leave a comment if you, if you also have this, right? Explain in a funny way how to maintain straight and level flights in a general aviation aircraft. Oh, because in an airliner, straight and level flight would just be autopilot on, right? Am I right, guys? Okay. Maintaining straight and level flight in a GA aircraft is like trying to balance a broomstick on your nose while walking on a tie rope. No, it's not. It is probably the simplest thing you can do. It's a delicate art that requires finesse and concentration, but with a little practice, anyone can master it. First, you need to make sure you're sitting in the right position. Slouching or leaning to one side can throw off the balance of the plane and make it harder to maintain level flight. No, it can, but it can certainly mess up your sight picture, okay? So sit up straight and put on your best poker face even when you're slightly terrified of flying straight and level. 
If you are terrified of that, then you might need to consider your uh, your career or hobby options here, okay? Next, you'll want to keep an eye on your instruments, like the airspeed indicator and the altimeter. These are like your plane's mood rings. Okay, we're showing our age a little bit here. I don't know of anyone past the early 2000s who had a mood ring, so good. Telling you how fast you're going and how high you are. If they start to get out of whack, it's time to make some adjustments, okay? And finally, you'll use your feet to control the rudder and keep the plane moving straight. It's kind of like a dance, but instead of doing the cha-cha, you're using your feet to keep the plane from veering off course. Just remember, left foot, right foot, don't do this. We are not doing left foot, right foot, okay? That's gonna get us doing this. And if you've ever sat in the back of a roller coaster, you would know exactly what that's gonna feel like, and the answer is not good. You'll be flying straighter than a ruler. Okay, yeah, all right. So there you have it, folks. Maintaining straight and level flight is as easy as sitting up straight, keeping an eye on your instruments, and doing a little dance with your feet. It's like a game of Simon Says, but with more altitude. Okay, yeah, don't stare at your instruments when you're flying straight and level. That's like the last thing that we teach as instructors for when you're a private pilot. I want to be looking outside. Okay, I'm learning to fly visual flight rules, so I want to be looking outside this whole time and enjoying the scenery and getting my straight and level from out there, not inside the cockpit. So, I don't know. Three out of 10 explanation, but uh, it did say explain in a funny way. So it didn't say bad, it said funny. So I don't know, it's kind of mm, four out of 10, okay? Okay. All right, so we've got poorly explain what the FAA is and does. This is definitely gonna be one we may want to cut out so that they don't come down hard on us for this one. All right, so here we go. The FAA, or the Federal Aviation Administration, is basically like the boss of all the airplanes in the sky. They're in charge of making sure that everything flies up there and does so safely without crashing into each other. The FAA makes a bunch of rules that pilots and airlines have to follow, like how high they can fly, where they can land, what kinds of equipment they need to have on board. They also have a bunch of air traffic controllers who sit in towers and talk to the pilots to make sure they don't run into each other or fly into dangerous areas. In a way, you could think of the FAA as the air traffic cops of the sky. They're the ones who make sure that all the planes are playing nice and following the rules, and if a plane does break the rules, the FAA can come down on them pretty hard, even sometimes revoking a pilot's license or grounding an airline's fleet. All right, that wasn't nearly as controversial as I thought it was going to be. I think the most controversial part of this is we asked it to poorly explain what the FAA is and does and it extremely accurately explained what the FAA is and does. So I'm not quite sure how to take that other than there's a conspiracy to keep the FAA looking good in ChatGPT and uh, it's doing a great job. So thank you all those programmers out there who made this possible. Oh, explain in a funny way what it means for a pilot to get a number to call while flying. Ugh. This is going to be a good one, right? Getting a number call while flying is like getting a homework assignment in the middle of recess. Yeah, kind of. It's more like getting sent to the principal's office in the middle of recess, but close enough. It means that the pilot has done something wrong, and now they have to call the FAA and explain themselves. Yes, you do. Maybe they flew too close to another airplane, or they didn't follow the right flight path, or they forgot to turn off their phone during takeoff. Oops. <laughs> If, uh, if ATC is monitoring me closely enough to know if I haven't turned my phone off, then I'm just impressed they have that much multitasking capability. Whatever it is, the FAA wants to have a little chat and make sure they don't do it again. So imagine you're up there cruising along in your airplane and suddenly your phone rings, but it's not your mom or your BFF. It's the FAA. And they want to talk to you about your flying skills. It's like getting called to the principal's office. What did I say? Except the principal is a lot scarier and has the power to revoke your pilot's license. Yikes. Yes, that is very true. Uh, except you won't get a phone call. You get called out in front of everybody on that frequency saying you got to call the number. So it's even worse. You are out at recess and the principal comes out of their office, calls you by your first, middle, and last names, and tells you to get inside in front of everyone else. That's what it's like getting a phone number. So if nothing else, if the safety and the regulations don't get you, the embarrassment will, okay? All right, next one is badly explain how airplanes are able to fly. So we talked about flying the airplane. Now, how do they fly, right? How do they create lift? Well, the reason airplanes can fly is a bit like a superhero movie. We're off to a great start. You see, the airplane is like a superhero with special powers. The wings are like big, powerful arms that can lift the plane up into the sky. The engines are like rocket boosters that give the plane super speed. And the control surfaces are like the superhero's trusty sidekick, always there to help steer the plane in the right direction. But just like any superhero, the Airplane has to be properly fueled up and maintained to keep performing at its best. And the pilots are like the superhero's secret.
secret identity, guiding the plane through the skies with the help of their trusty sidekick, the control tower. Okay, so this is definitely a nine out of 10 of badly explained how an airplane is able to fly. So it's repeating itself a little bit here, right? Yes, the wings are like powerful arms that can lift the plane up into the sky. I guess really it's the air and actually it's the air that is uh lifting the wings up into the sky that's lifting the plane up into the sky uh, the wings are yeah i mean this is this is just a mess i don't even know where to start on this one so we have the control surfaces are the trusty sidekick and also the control towers the trusty sidekick so again a little repetitive there we've got just like a superhero the airplane has to be fueled up and maintained i guess yeah if you're talking about you got to eat healthy and maintain yourself with exercise or the superhero does sure yeah that's close enough right so yeah, very, very bad explanation of how an airplane flies. Funny explanation of what a CFI is. Okay. A certified flight instructor, it even knew what that was, I'm impressed, is basically like a human GPS for the sky. Yeah, that's, that's work, yeah. Yes, it is. There's uh, ones who make sure you don't crash into any birds or clouds while you're up there. I have yet to crash into a cloud. I've flown into some clouds. They, they haven't damaged anything yet, but maybe I just haven't been flying into the right clouds. They also have the superpower of being able to stay calm and collected while you're freaking out about flying. Yes, that is very true. It's like having your own personal superhero in the cockpit. Man, apparently just pirates are... Pi pirates. Pilots are superheroes. That's going to do so well to feed everyone's ridiculously small egos out there, I know, is ChatGPT saying, I guess, man, a pilot must have put a bunch of information in here with all these uh, personal superhero <laughs> analogies that ChatGPT has got going here. Just make sure you don't mistake them for the pilot and try to offer them a stack or drink. What? That doesn't even make sense. Is it saying CFIs are pilots? Now I'm just offended. They are there to teach not to fly the plane for you. Thank you. So for all you instructors out there that are taking the controls instantaneously, even this chat bot knows that you're not supposed to fly the plane, right? Just sit there with your arms crossed, right? All right, everybody. Well, that wraps it up today on uh, what ChatGPT thinks of us here in aviation. And uh, if you've ever used ChatGPT for uh, to ask silly questions about aviation, leave a comment down below. And if you have any questions about this video, leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content.